Hello everyone and welcome to our measurement issues and whip SCADA webinar. It's my pleasure to introduce our SCADA expert, Sandy Munro. Sandy, you're very welcome. Good morning, Andel. Nice to be here. Right. Well, before we kick off our questions, could you just give us a bit of history on how you evolved into a whip SCADA expert? Well, uh, let's, let's start at the beginning, I guess. I had my commercial pilot's license and I met some people who wanted to introduce me into the world of SCADA. They thought I could service their customers better by flying out to site. So they started me on to my career as a SCADA person, an automation person doing field work. And uh, from there I, I've stayed with it and done 30 years in the industry. Before we jump into more details, um, just a short history on SCADA and its application in the oil and gas industry, and perhaps just starting off with a definition of SCADA. Well, SCADA is, is supervisory control on data acquisition. In reference to, to oil and gas, uh, just like any other industry, but more so with oil and gas, they have so many meters and well sites that are remotely located away from their main gas plant that need monitoring. So an older SCADA system would consist of an HMI SCADA master talking through typically a radio or microwave spread spectrum system, might be licensed frequencies, off to a uh, controller in the field that was of course then hooked up to to instrumentation and data devices. Uh, standalone network, not connected to any any intranet, any any network anywhere, and provided data primarily through uh, report prints off of a say a matrix dot printer. In the older systems, because the data was strictly limited to reporting via maybe a matrix dot printer that print out a report and then got submitted to head office, it really limited the the functionality of a SCADA system into the business side of an operations or a company. So as SCADA systems evolve, we start getting into a newer and newer SCADA systems that followed the world of digital transformation. And including in that then you had a SCADA system that had to have a way to join maybe a corporate network. So you ended up using maybe a corporate WAN. Uh, then we ended up into the world of internet and cellular modems and a way to connect devices remotely and into the corporate world. Uh, so being part of the corporate network then meant connected to corporate servers, intranets, and then of course to the internet. So that's a new SCADA system today. It'll be, you'll certainly see a control center intranet, and then you'll have the other intranets maybe connected by corporate WAN, and you maybe have frame relay networks, radio, radio wave networks, that type of thing, dedicated lines. They're all then supported into one big network, of course, using some kind of security or firewalls to keep keep the data and, and the security necessary for a SCADA system. Thank you, Sandy. That explains about SCADA, but how does Web SCADA fit into this picture? How does Web SCADA work? So if we're looking at the involvement of the of the newer SCADA system, including a SCADA system being part of an intranet as part of a larger corporate network. But then it involved more and more access requirements for, for a corporation, for a company. So that meant how do people then access remotely? So if you've got a central system, how do people access that central system? And the easy answer really became the internet. So then the SCADA systems had to evolve into a cloud-based system. That then allowed everybody who, had, who, was, who could access the internet a way to access their SCADA system. Uh, some people might be wary of trusting a cloud-based you know, software with all their data. How does the security on a SCADA system compare to that of a web SCADA system? Anything connected to the internet in today's world is going to be a security concern for everyone. And SCADA systems are just as susceptible as everything else. And in the old days, when you had a, 
if you had a system that wasn't properly set up, there's, there's certain security flaws inherent within a SCADA system. For example, your Modbus, your DMP3, those are very common SCADA protocols. Then they don't support uh, authentication and encryption. So now organizations then had to really look at how to separate that control system from um, their corporate system and allow access or control access to the users required to interface with the SCADA system directly. So that's where we ended up getting into the world of security and the requirements to do um, separate uh, systems networks. For example, uh, you would have a corporate system that would be an enterprise layer connected through a say demilitarized zone or DMZ zone which would involve your security systems, your firewalls your, and gateways, um, separating the IT, which is your information technology, your data management, from your operational technology, your OT world. That then was separated from your operations and control systems, which could be an overlay of a SCADA system, say at a plant. Um, and that's usually where your databases could exist. Those databases connected, of course, to your control system which would be your like a level two and then you have those connected eventually to your PLCs, your RTUs, your EFM device in the field which are finally to the bottom layer, your level zero if you will, your ground level which would be your information devices, those transmitters, the pressure transmitters, the transducers uh, that would actually pro provide the raw information. Thank you, Sandy. So, when you implement a web SCADA system, what do you have to take into consideration during the implementation? So, the first thing you have to look at would be data separation, confirming that, that the customer's data and the application are actually segregated properly. Then you look at your infrastructure control. Uh, how much control do customers have to change, have make or pro have changes into the provider's interface? And, and their inter infrastructure. Uh, what are the considerations? Things like how do how does the data come in? Is it is it protected? Is it through a VPN system? And uh, is that system part of a big communication network? Um, is it when you're looking at how a customer is going to interface those workstations? How are they segregated? Are there firewalls in place? Providing that security layer. So the customers are very comfortable knowing that their data is securely protected. Is it encrypted data? Is there patching to the servers? So all of these things are really necessary when you're putting in a web SCADA system. What kind of servers are you using? What is your firewall system? What is your security around it? And, and how do you keep the system up to date so that you're, you've got the latest and the, and the greatest operating system so that your data is actually protected for your clients? How do you provide reporting to the client? How do they get their data? And how do you continuously monitor that system? So those are all big, big SCADA, web SCADA system considerations um, just to protect the data and to make sure the client gets a smooth operation with their data and can interact with their data the way they need to. Now that we've looked at how to implement a web SCADA system, can you run us through the advantages, just a summary of all the advantages in actually using a web SCADA system? Well, a, a good web, web SCADA system is going to be built on open standards. It's going to support open technologies like SQL, MQTT, OPC UA. Uh, those are all, of course, terms most people may not have heard of, but uh, very common in a web SCADA system, HTML5, CSS standards. And the advantage of having that then gives you the ability to do data exports using standard file formats, CSVs, type of thing. Um, data sharing via APIs, but the data then is available because you've built open standards, can interact with a customer's business systems far easily uh, than, than just a separate system. Um, your data is going to be available in a convenient and modified form, like I said, uh, um, CSV files, for example, or maybe an Excel file if you wanted that. Um, there's interoperability that is going to come with a web SCADA system, the advantage of data sharing and adoption via those standards that can interact with a corporate system. Uh, the data can be easily reused and reformatted. You can provide that data through um, 
in, into their business systems very easily, into accounting systems, into something like a Power BI system. So those are easily fed from a web SCADA system simply because you have the, the open standards around it that you can format the data that the customer can then reuse easily. That's the advantage from the data side of things. How does that data interact with the customers? But some of the other advantages of this web SCADA system, the security that we've been talking about, it's done for you. You don't have to recreate it. You've got one central hub that's providing the data concentration, pushing data into your business applications. But it's all then also then decoupled from your business application. The big thing is there's going to be managed firewalls, segmented networks, all of those things, encrypted passwords uh, that a client's going to know or require to know that their system and their security of the data is top of mind for them. They don't have to worry about it. It's not their concern. It's the web-based SCADA system that's going to have to provide all those features, separating it through a DMZ, the demilitarized zone that we talked about. Um, your customer's data and the applications are going to be separate from each other. Um, but all of those things are going to be put in place and built for you. You don't have to actually worry about them. Uh, software is going to be maintained. You're going to be constantly upgraded. You're going to get new features. So part of a web SCADA system means that as development of new features are constantly added, you benefit from that. You don't have to worry about that. If you have requirements for your SCADA system, you may be able to request a feature. That could be deployed for all customers. So everybody's contributing to, to one system, and the system should grow organically, just uh, benefit-wise to the customer. Uh, you pay no you pay no extra annual support fees. You don't have to pay service fees or maintenance fees with the system. That's all included as part of the of, of being uh, having your data within a web SCADA system. You get unlimited users. There's no extra cost for that. Um, all that development is provided for you. Native protocol development, for example, you get you can now collect data from a, a list of all kinds of common field devices. If you have an area and you purchase a separate area which may be different devices, then that web SCADA system, chances are, it's going to have all of those drivers immediately available. Uh, most web SCADA systems should have a plethora of, of protocols available so that you can easily adapt to anything in the field. That's, a, that's part of the advantages of it and, and the experience of a web SCADA support team bringing years of SCADA experience together under one roof so that they can easily adapt to whatever the protocol is, whatever the system is, they all always or already have that experience in being able to interface with that data. You get an experienced team of support already in place. Thank you, Sandy. So there's definitely a lot of advantages when using a web SCADA system, but if we could look a little bit deeper into how web SCADA actually benefits the oil and gas industry. Which sectors benefit most from SCADA if you're looking at upstream, midstream, and downstream? Well, I think it would depend on what department you work for. You might argue for, if you're in, say, downstream, you might argue that you benefit the most. They all definitely benefit. I think the, the bigger thing is, though, the upstream, those people with the meters that can be miles away from where you exist or from where you are operating. You, you can tie large areas together within a web SCADA system and you can and uh, you can have multiple gas fields connected into one central system but you think of the driving time that that it requires to go from one site to the next to the next whereas in a plant it's all contained within the plant uh, there will be certainly more devices within the plant but within within the operator's time to go from one device to the next I think that's the biggest benefit that a SCADA system would provide. It'll get you that data instantly. You can monitor things. You can do uh, manage by report by exception. So rather than worrying about every site having to go and check on it, you are now getting the alarms and the, the operating conditions that are important to you uh, on an hourly basis, if not faster, so that you can now pay attention to where you need to go to maintain your system. So running a successful operation completely relies on accurate measurement. So which specific measurement issues can WebSCADA solve for an oil and gas operator? 
a good web SCADA system can actually monitor a thing like gas composition. How do you how do you update the gas composition uh, without without manual intervention? Is there a way to to monitor that? A good web SCADA system will also look at that and and do gas measurement checks, comparing things like gas composition. Are your standards are your calibrations done within range? Uh, do those checks for you every day, making sure that when you're actually producing the data that is being produced with the right parameters. So probably that's the biggest advantage that I would say uh, out, out of a web SCADA system, a proper web SCADA system. And, be, and, and it goes back to having the development of a web SCADA system and, and the requirements from multiple producers to be able to implement some of those standards that become just a, a normal standard for a, a good web SCADA system. Now, so now that you've got a web SCADA system that can actually help with the gas measurement accuracy, then that's going to help the companies, the oil and gas companies, in their operations, in their collection of data, as that data then moves into their production accounting systems and in, into their reservoir data. They, they can be assured that the, the data they've received is actually accurate. So it's going to be less time reworking um, volume allocations, for example, or reworking their daily production numbers and, and, re, and doing their reporting to the, op, to the governmental bodies, the regulatory bodies that require reporting. They don't have to keep going back and revisiting it. They can rest assured that the data that they've received has been accurate in the first place. Thank you, Sandy. And we've spoken a lot about all the different advantages to using the WebScatter system, but it's always nice to tie it back to an actual real-life example. So can you give us a scenario that you've worked with a company before and how a WebScatter system transformed that oil and gas company? A great example of how a WebScatter system was able to actually really benefit an oil and gas company is when they were looking at how they were doing their well testing. So a well test has multiple meters or multiple wells coming into a group separator and then they would have a test separator off to the side, swing the well and require testing, the government regulations require periodic testing of each well that's coming through that group separator. So how do they do that? Well they would have to swing a well and then they'd have to wait for the EFM device to go through a contract hour so they could get a valid 24 hour period. We were able to work with a company, develop a system that would collect the history that they needed, and if they had an upset, they could just extend that that well test period, thereby they don't have to restart any tests. And the operator could then go look at the data, accept the data or reject it. If he rejected, he could either extend it or start the test all over again. But if he extended it, the the window, the 24-hour period, would adjust automatically. We would then collect that data. Once he, he says that is a good, that's good data, accepts the test, that data immediately is, a, is collected by, by the web SCADA system, exported off to their production accounting. Within an hour, they have their valid test results with, into their accounting system. So from start to finish, they save time in the field, they save time in the production accounting, Everything's reviewed automatically, and uh, their process speeded up quite dramatically. And the operators in the field really appreciate being able to use that from their phone and be able to control their well tests. So most of the time when we invest in new software, we might use the basic features. But what are some of the more advanced benefits of a web scatter system that perhaps not all operators are taking advantage of? I think that... Uh, an operator really needs to take advantage of the experience of the team and that will help as they, they deploy new systems, new new meters and, and an experienced team can then help help them with the reporting, um, the formats of the reports, the construction of those and a good SCADA system will allow an operator to also create their own reports as, as they need and to build their own trends and to have advanced functionality so that they can implement and view the data the, the, the way they would need to. Don't depend on just somebody building you a SCADA system saying here's your numbers, here's your reports and be done with it. What is the flexibility that you're going to get out of a, of a good web SCADA system? What other tools do you have available? Do you have um, things like 
a report that gives you the gas composition for all the meters in an area without having to go one by one. Save you time, just click on, an, uh, on a button and you've got all the gas composition, you've got all the meter configurations that you're required to report on and maintain uh, 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 the standards of. All available at a single click. So push the envelope, push, push the, the idea that all the data is in, in that SCADA system and how can you view it and how can you interact with it, what other tools are available. Can you import that? Can you use it into, into a Power BI? Can you leverage this as part of the normal data flow? Great. Well, I'm sure our audience is probably sold on all the business benefits of investing in a web scatter system, but what kind of upfront capital are they looking at um, and when can they expect a return on their investment? So upfront capital, other than doing equipment purchase for on-site, the upfront capital required to to get into a web SCADA system is usually just paying for a cellular modem and antenna, having somebody to deploy it. But there's no infrastructure cost, there's no software cost, there's no service or maintenance cost. Those are all provided for you. So you're, you're doing a minimal investment and within a year you should be seeing the benefits of putting that into a SCADA system. In fact, depending on where that meter is, you could realize that return in, in the first month um, by not having an operator having to go to, to that site. Mm -hmm. the, the driving time, the, the ready access of that data coming through into a SCADA system being reported on and using the alarms by exception rule, the management of, of your field, you can manage a lot more with a lot less and you're going to save time immediately. Okay, so but what if a oil and gas company has already um, got the SCADA system in place? Is it easy enough to switch over to WebScada or to link WebScada up? To switch into a WebScada system is very easy. Uh, normally it could be as easy if it's already a cellular modem on site, it's switching in a SIM card. Uh, the bigger problem is always how do you get that data? What is the mapping of the data? If there's extra data, extra I.O. points, for example, pressure transmitters tied into a different point, uh, figuring out your Modbus mapping. A good experienced team should be able to to pull all that data and get that for you and be able to build it um, and, and, and easily deploy uh, your meters into a, into a web SCADA system very very quickly. Um, it wouldn't be it would be easy to do uh, for example a hundred meters within within a week. Uh, depending on, on the type of, of controller in the field, of course. Uh, but a good experienced team should have that ex should have the knowledge already on how to interface with those devices and just be able to deploy and quickly deploy new sites easily. Okay. So after implementing a new system, there's usually some niggles in the early days. Could you discuss some of the main issues operators experience with these SCADA systems, web SCADA systems, um, and how they can address these? I think the biggest thing that most operations will encounter will be how do they navigate within the new SCADA system? Where are the buttons? Where is the information they'd like to see? Is it easily available? That should be fairly intuitive and if it's not, if there's some advanced features and most SCADA systems will have those advanced features, that can be easily addressed with, with proper training from support. So, those, those are usually you will get people up and running very, very easily with, with a proper support team in place to be able to guide them as they could become comfortable with the new SCADA system. Okay, so adopting any new type of technology, there might be some oil and gas operators that are a bit hesitant to invest in web SCADA. Can you alleviate some of their fears? Well, I think overall in this discussion as we've talked about the security, we've talked about the, the network, the, the redundancy of a web SCADA system that should be in place, residing in proper data bunkers, the firewalls, the gateways, all of that that should put that, that or alleviate the fear that they'd have that their, their system could be compromised. And to look at the technology, the new technology, a web SCADA system has to keep up with modern technology, MQTT for example. Uh, older systems didn't do that 
that's more of a report by exception from the field and how that data is mapped back into common into common registers from the field back into a SCADA system. Those are things that a SCADA system, uh, an experienced crew or, or team of support should be able to easily integrate for you. So rather than having to worry about it, I've definitely had customers when and they'd be very concerned about doing this. How do how are you going to tie into my system? And because of the experience, I just looked at this and said, well, I, I, I don't have an issue. So the experience of a, of a good team will certainly help alleviate any of those fears that a customer can have. Okay, so we spoke a little bit earlier, I think you touched on with SCADA integrating with you know, the production accounting systems. So could you give us an idea of other processes perhaps that could integrate with the WebScatter system to optimize its benefits and efficiency? So other processes that, that a SCADA system can connect to and help improve, things like managing your gas composition, um, taking that raw data, the pressures that you might see, the flows, the gas composition, provi providing that to say an integrity system, how secure is your, is your pipeline, the risk and the management of that and the integrity of that pipeline is certainly affected by the by the fluids and the composition of those fluids going through it. So if you're getting, getting that data uh, on an hourly basis or a daily basis into a, into a risk integrity system, your calculations and your, your status is going to be updated daily. That's going to help your risk and integrity score. You can manage your gas composition very easily. You can uh, accept that from a lab and again without manual intervention that's going to be that's just going to be an easy improvement within your operating um, methodologies to to manage your gas composition uh, the accuracy of being able to do that without having somebody try to type it in and fat fingered Freddy makes that mistake mm -hmm. you don't you eliminate those errors mm -hmm. then on the other side of things the data now that it's been centralized we, you can you can aggregate it into maybe a a second server or a second database or easily give access to another to a company to be able to manipulate that data and to trend that data and do their own analysis on that data very easily. Power BI is becoming a huge tool within the industry and can that can Power BI access all that data? So those are some of the things that are going to just naturally start to help um, different levels of a corporation be able to manage that data and to and to improve their efficiencies based on that data. Uh, when you're looking at uh, a CEO, do, do they really care to go down to the minute details? But maybe a, a SCADA system can give you them up-to-date information on, on the money or the gas uh, the volumes that are being generated daily without having to go well by well. You can get a report on that. You can see that trend data and you can analyze it the way you need to. So there's a lot of business processes that can certainly help by taking advantage of that SCADA data. Well, thank you, Sonia. We've certainly covered a lot of ground today in a lot of detail. Perhaps later on we can, we can uh, do another webinar and just dive into even more detail. Perhaps our audience will send us some questions and we'll, we'll call you up again to give us some more, some more information. I'm always happy to talk about SCADA systems. My problem is usually I go on a lot, a lot longer than most people expect, but uh, it's a good conversation and it's exciting to have. Exciting to see where SCADA systems are going in it with new technology all the time. So this is an evolving world, and I'm just excited to be part of it. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it, and we'll chat to you again soon. Thanks, Andil. Awesome. Cheers, Andy.